Good morning. Uh, good afternoon, I should say, year two. Welcome to Monday's RE lesson. So today we're going to be moving on to an event that's going to be happening, well, starting during our half term holidays. And that is Lent. Can it, do any of you know what Lent is? Do any of you know anything about Lent? Tell your screen or if there's a grown up or a brother or sister nearby, tell them everything you know about Lent. How interesting, that's great. You know lots already, so we're going to learn a little bit more today. Now, just before we start, can I just say, on our plan for this, for today, there is another video, which is the story of Jesus in the wilderness. And I would like you to watch that video before you carry on watching this one, if you haven't already, because that will give you a lot of the information you need to help understand what we're doing in this lesson. So today we're going to be beginning our work on Lent because it's a very, very important um, time for us as Christians. And we're looking at what Lent is. I'm going to look at some of the symbols that we associate with Lent, some of the, the pictures or images or objects that remind us of Lent and what happened during Lent. Now, Lent goes on for 40 days. Can any of you think about why that might be? Why does Lent go on for 40 days? You're absolutely right. It's because that's how long Jesus went into the desert when he was sent by that God's Holy Spirit to go and pray before he began his ministry, before he began teaching and um, converting people to believe in God. So he went for 40 days. We also during Lent, lots of people either have fasting days that means days where they don't eat and they normally happen on ash wednesday and good friday so the beginning and towards the end of lent okay and do you any and but most uh, uh, christians especially catholics they also give up eating meat on fridays during lent they only eat fish that's the only kind of meaty thing they eat can you think why they might give up some food during lent Think of the story we've just watched. That's right. That's because when Jesus went into the desert, he didn't eat for 40 days and he didn't eat for 40 days because he wanted to become closer to God. He wanted to pray to God and he wanted um, to be focused so much on God that he didn't even want to eat. He just wanted to focus on that. That was the most important thing for him. So today we're going to be looking at some of the symbols of Lent. And we're going to go through them and you're going to be doing some work where you're going to be drawing your own symbols. And if you choose the easier sheet, you're going to be cutting out and sticking the um, explanations of what they remind us of and sticking them in the right place and drawing the pictures. And if you're doing the trickier sheet, which I recommend most of you to do if possible, you're going to be choosing five of the symbols of Lent. There's more than five on this, so you'll be able to pick and choose which ones you like best. You're going to be telling me what their name is in the next box and you're going to be writing what they remind us of. How do they link to our beliefs and uh, stories about Jesus? OK, so let's start. So the first symbol of Lent is the ash cross. And you can see here this lady is getting an ash cross put up, ash cross. That's hard to say. Put on her head by a priest. And it's black, isn't it? And it goes on your forehead. Can you remember having an ash cross put on your forehead? I think we managed to do this last year. But we definitely did it in reception if we didn't manage to do it last year when we went to church. So during Lent, we go to church on Ash Wednesday. So that's the first day of Lent. Father puts a cross on our forehead with his thumb made from ashes. Now ashes are bits of something that's been burned, okay? And these ashes are made from burnt palm leaves from last year's Palm Sunday Mass. So do you remember anything about what happens on Palm Sunday? Palm Sunday happens before Ash Wednesday. What happens on Palm Sunday? It's the day, isn't it, that Jesus rides into Jerusalem on a donkey and everyone loves him and everyone's celebrating him. 
and they lay palm leaves in front of him, just like a king would have a path laid out in front of them to stop them getting dirty so he can enter the city of Jerusalem. So that was a joyful time, wasn't it? And actually it was before it's, um, yeah, it's after Ash Wednesday, isn't it? Um, and then we know what happens, don't we? That eventually that joy, people get a bit weary of Jesus, a bit scared of him and he gets in trouble and he eventually dies on the cross, doesn't he? So we remember that celebration with the burnt palms. The, the burning symbolizes the fact that that joy has been changed at the time, hasn't it? And it helps us to remember the sorrow that we feel, okay? So the ash cross reminds us that Jesus died for us and we wear the cross on our forehead so we can say sorry to God for our sins. It prepares us for Lent by reminding us of our sins so we can try to be more like Jesus. So we talked about last week, didn't we? Being more like Jesus. This ash cross reminds us that Jesus died for us. It reminds us of the sadness, doesn't it? The cross is a symbol of Jesus, isn't it? Because he died on the cross and it's made of the ashes of the celebration leaves, isn't it? So it prepares us for Lent. So that's the first one, the ash cross. Next, we've got fish. On Fridays during Lent, Christians are asked not to eat meat. So every Friday they won't have meat. And we do that at our school every week, don't we? On Fridays in our, our lunch, we have a fish meal or a vegetarian meal. Um, but in Lent, it's especially important. And people who don't follow it at other times will follow it during Lent. Many also choose to fast. That means go without food completely on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. Because of this, Christians eat fish during Fridays in Lent. So fish is seen as a, as a um, meal that we can eat during Lent because it's not meat. We eat fish and not meat during Fridays in Lent to remind us of when Jesus fasted in the desert for 40 days and overcame the temptations of the devil. So because Jesus didn't eat anything and we're trying to live like Jesus, we go without meat, don't we? Also, as well as reminding us of when Jesus fasted in the desert and resisted the devil, the word fish in Greek is, and I don't know how to pronounce this, so I'm going to have a go, ichthus. Each letter in this word is the beginning of each word in the phrase Jesus Christ, God's son and saviour. So the I, the I, is the first letter of Jesus in Greek. The CH are the first two letters of Christ. The TH the th means God, first two letters of God. The U in Ichthus means son, it's the first letter of son. And saviour, the S in Ichthus is the first letter of saviour. So also, as well as reminding us of Jesus' sacrifice, fish remind us that Jesus is God's son and saviour. Saviour means he comes to save the world. Okay, there's also stones are a symbol of Lent. When Jesus went into the desert wilderness, he was surrounded by stones because the desert was dry with no life in it. So it, what is now Israel, which was Jerusalem um, around that area, the deserts were very, very dry. The wilderness was OK. And there was lots of stones. And it reminds us that, that Jesus went there, doesn't it? These stones remind us of Jesus's sacrifice and his faith in the desert. When he went 40 days without food, he didn't give in. He carried on. He showed how strong he was, didn't he? Stones also remind us that Jesus overcame the temptation to turn the stones into food so he could eat, which proved his strength and faith to God. So the devil said to him, didn't he? He said, if you're the son of God, why don't you turn all this, uh, all these stones into bread so you can eat? And Jesus knew he could, but he said, no, I'm not doing it. We've got the palm leaf. During Lent, we go to church for the Palm Sunday service. On Palm Sunday, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. Everybody cheers because they were so happy to see the Son of God. So at the start of the Easter story, this is later on, isn't it? Jesus rides in on a donkey and everyone greets him like he's a king. Everyone's so happy to see him. We know, sadly, that it doesn't end up like that, does it? But it starts very positively, doesn't it? 
the palm leaf reminds us that Jesus rode into Jerusalem as a king and we celebrate Jesus's love. So the palm leaf reminds us that Jesus is a king and that he loves all of us. The bread and wine. During Holy Communion, many older children and adults take the bread and the wine in mass. This symbolizes the body and blood of Christ, which is, he gives to us. This is because Jesus died to take away our sins. So he gave up his body and blood for us. So we remember, don't we, of the Last Supper. OK, the bread and wine remind us that Jesus sacrificed his life. He died for us. He gave us his body. He told us this during the Last Supper when he gave the bread and wine to his friends, knowing he was going to be crucified. Then we've got the bowl of water and cloth. At the Last Supper, Jesus did something very unusual. He took each of his disciples' feet and washed them before their meal. This was so unusual because usually it was a servant's job to clean people's feet, not a king's. The water and cloth symbolizes that Jesus is our friend. He wants to guide us and help us, not just to give us commands and tell us what to do. He, he helps us, doesn't he? We don't have to choose to follow what he says, but he would like us to. He showed he was kind and that he serves all of his people. Next, we've got the crown of thorns. When Jesus was put on the cross to die, the Roman soldiers placed a crown of thorns on his head. This was meant to make fun of him for saying he was a king. The crown of thorns symbolizes the suffering and pain Jesus went through for us so he could take away our sins and allow us everlasting life in heaven. It shows that Jesus is a king, but a king that has suffered for us. So it's a crown, isn't it? Because Jesus is a king, even if the Roman soldiers were being a bit mean. But it also shows because that crown of thorns would have dug into his skin and it would have been very, very sore. It shows that he suffered for us. He didn't just take the easy way, did he? He had to go through a lot of pain, and a lot of suffering to help us. The colour purple. Purple as a colour is a symbol of Lent. During Lent, the priest wears purple vestments and the altar is decorated in purple cloths. The colour purple is thought to be a royal colour, which symbolises a king. This is because a long time ago, purple dye was so expensive that only very rich people like kings could afford to buy it. And we think of Jesus as a king, don't we? Purple is also a symbol of sorrow and regret. And we ask God for, for, for forgiveness during Lent. So it reminds us, firstly, that Jesus is a king. But secondly, just like in um, Advent, it's a time for sorrow and for uh, what we call penitence. That's saying sorry, because we're asking for God's forgiveness for all the things we do wrong. We're cleaning ourselves during Lent, aren't we? And getting ourselves closer to God. OK, so there are some of the symbols of Lent. There are more, but they're the main ones we're looking at. So if you're doing the trickier worksheet, you need to choose five of those symbols draw a picture of them in the first column. Then in the second column, the middle column, tell me what they are. So for example, if you drew a picture of the crown of thorns, you draw the picture in the first, I'll do it this side, picture in the first column. Then in the second column, you'd write crown of thorns. Then the third column, you're gonna tell me what it reminds us of, okay? What does it remind us about Jesus or about God? And then if you do the easier sheet, you're going to read the words in the middle box and, th and then in the first box, you're going to draw the symbol. And then in the third box, you need to cut out and stick uh, the right definition for what each word reminds us of. OK, I look forward to seeing it year two. Bye bye.